Hello everyone, today we have a lot of stuff to cover in AI news. Some of the bigger stories include Luma Labs releasing their new text-to-video and image-to-video model called Dream Machine, which is completely free to use and honestly looks really good. Next, we have NVIDIA releasing their new model, Nemotron 4, which we'll dive deeper into later in the video. And finally, we'll take a look at some current advancements and trends in AI that suggest we're headed towards some very interesting times. <laughs> Firstly, I wanted to briefly talk about some of the medical research Google has been doing because it oftentimes doesn't get enough credit. So they posted this blog about advancing health and wellness insights with AI, and they've created what they call the Personal Health Large Language Model, aka PHLLM. Its goal is basically to make you healthier and happier, and the way they evaluate it is based on three benchmarks where they look at the model's ability to produce detailed insights and recommendations for individuals based on their sleep patterns, physical activity, Activity and physiological responses, as well as the model's expert level domain knowledge and its prediction of self-reported assessments of sleep quality. So the idea here is to create an LLM that can be trained on many aspects of a person's life that are relevant to health and wellness, and for it to be able to use all that data to then answer any questions you may have specifically tailored for you. Another thing Google has been working on, and this actually comes from Google DeepMind, they created a virtual rat that's controlled by a virtual rat brain in a physics simulator. Using deep reinforcement learning, they then trained the virtual rat to imitate the behavior of real free-moving rats. They found that neural activity was better predicted by the virtual rodent's network activity than by any of the real rat's movements. So this gave them a more advanced understanding of the neural activity patterns in a rat's brain and could potentially do the same for other types of animals and even humans. Moving on, we have Luma AI's new video model called the Dream Machine. This model is available to use right now on their website and it's surprisingly really good. As you can see here from the clips on screen, it can generate a variety of different styles of video and what's truly surprising about this model is its ability to turn images into videos really well. Here are a few classic memes that you may have already seen before except now they're being turned into videos. Obviously it's not perfect but as with anything in AI, you have to remember that this is the worst it'll ever be. If this is what the general public has access to right now, I can only imagine what large companies like OpenAI, who's been sitting on Sora for months now, has access to behind closed doors. It's really crazy to think about. Another video model that released recently was Runway's Gen 3 Alpha. I haven't really had a chance to play around with this model yet, but based on the clips I've seen from their website and from Twitter, it looks really good. Probably even better than Luma Lab's Dream Machine. What I noticed first was its ability to generate photorealistic looking human faces displaying a wide variety of emotions. It does this better than than any publicly available model I've seen, and it's honestly just crazy to see the speed at which these models get better. I mean, literally a few weeks ago, the only model I knew of that could generate photorealistic videos like this was Sora, and it wasn't even released. Now we have Google's VO, Luma AI's Dream Machine, Chinese company Kuishu's Kling, and of course this model, Runway Gen 3 Alpha, which all generate video from text or image basically more or less as good as Sora. So the video generation space is certainly advanced very rapidly, and I'm excited to see what people will be able to create with these new models. Next, I wanted to briefly talk about this paper where they used Llama 3's 8 billion parameter model to outperform GPT-4 on certain mathematical benchmarks. The way they did this is by creating the MCT self-refine or MCTSR algorithm, which integrates LLMs with Monte Carlo tree search. MCTSR leverages systematic exploration and heuristic self-refine mechanisms to improve decision-making frameworks within LLMs. The algorithm constructs a Monte Carlo search tree through iterative processes of selection, self-refine, self-evaluation, and backpropagation, utilizing an improved upper confidence-bound UCB formula to optimize the exploration-exploitation balance. So I'm not going to pretend like I understand this, but here they show its performance on some math benchmarks, and it's right up there with some of the larger models like GPT-4 Turbo, Claude 3, and Gemini 1.5 Pro. As you can see here, it performs 17.22% 
on the Math Odyssey benchmark zero shot, but as they implement the algorithm, it gets up to 49.36%, beating out GPT-4 Turbo at 49.1%, and then of course Claude 3 and Gemini 1.5 Pro. It also scores high on the GSM-8K benchmark, getting up to 96.66%, falling short only to GPT-4 Turbo's 97.1%. So the key thing to remember here is that this is an 8 billion parameter model, beating out models with hundreds of billions or even trillions of parameters. This is an example of a narrow super intelligence, which can be very useful in situations where high inference speed is needed or to run locally on smaller devices like smartphones or even AR slash VR glasses. Another thing I wanted to talk about was NVIDIA's release of their new 340 billion parameter model Nemotron 4. So it's actually a family of models they released and its purpose is to help developers generate high quality synthetic data to train LLMs across many industries like healthcare, finance, manufacturing, retail, etc. It also says here that it's an open source model and it's completely free to use. You can download it right now on Hugging Face. So they also released a technical report alongside this which shows its performance on some popular benchmarks and I wouldn't say it's up there yet with the top performing models but keep in mind its purpose is for training LLMs not for performing well on benchmarks. NVIDIA is really starting to become a force in the AI industry. They're not only providing the infrastructure for the leading AI companies but also creating their own AI systems. Plus what they're doing with robotics now is just insane. I posted a video recently going over all that if you want to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Speaking of robotics, the industry is really starting to take off and we're starting to see a lot more discussions about it. Here we have an article that discusses the arrival of robots in the restaurant industry. It goes on to list a few examples of robots that can cook or serve you food. Here is the pizza bot which claims to be able to accurately dispense any pizza of any topping. There's even the alpha grill which can cook up to 200 burgers per hour and even clean cleans itself when it's done cooking. Robots can also serve food and pick up dishes, but these robot servers have been around for a few years now, so you might be thinking this is nothing new. But the reason this is so different now is because these robots are getting a lot smarter and more autonomous by the day. And with a few more advancements, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing humanoid robots working in restaurants as waiters and chefs. It does seem like we're headed in that direction, and if you look at something like this, this is China's X-Robots as they call them, and they're designed to be hyper-real realistic humanoid robots. They're trained to understand and mimic human facial expressions, resulting in a lifelike appearance. Imagine something like this, integrated with an AI system that allows it to understand the world and perform tasks like cooking or serving. As scary as it might sound, I don't think we're far away from that happening and what that will look like for the economy is hard to say. Elon Musk believes that this is the future and that humanoid robots are going to be abundant by the end of the decade. Here is one of the predictions he made recently at Tesla's annual shareholder meeting. It, it actually gets way crazier uh, when you think about the, our, the Optimus uh, robot, which is really a humanoid robot that is intended to, um, you know, be able to do anything you want it to do, to be, uh, you, know, it's, uh, your, you know, your companion, it can be at your house, it can sort of uh, babysit your kids, it could teach them, uh, be a teacher, um, it, it, you know, it can do factory stuff. Like, I, I think that the ultimate ratio of, you say, how many super useful humanoid helper droids do you want? Like, who doesn't want a C-3PO, you know? Um, uh, you know, but a C-3PO plus R2-D2 plus, you know, plus plus. Um, it would be pretty awesome. Uh, I, think, I think everyone in the world is going to want one. I think we could make one for a cost of maybe at, at, at really high scale of about ten thousand dollars. It's 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 smaller. It's, it'll be less expensive than a car. So, uh, and, and I think if you sold it for sell it for twenty thousand dollars or something, this is at large scale volume. Um, Tesla would basically make about a trillion dollars of profit a year from that. So humanoid robots is not the only thing we need to worry about. There's also been a recent drop in demand for remote freelancers. It says here a report from Imperial College Business School, Harvard Business School, and the German Institute for Economic Research found the demand for digital freelancers in writing and coding declined by 21% since the launch of ChatGPT in November 2022. Automation prone fields like writing, software, and app development saw a 21% decrease in job listings while data entry and 
and social media post-production experienced a 13% drop. Image generation roles, including graphic design and 3D modeling, fell by 17%. Google search trends confirmed a higher decline in sectors aware of and using generative AI. So this is a trend that will likely continue as the race for AGI continues and we get smarter and more generalized systems. We're also going to start seeing a lot more discussions about this in the near future as more people become affected and it'll likely become a prominent topic of debate in the elections and just in the mainstream. As you can see here, OpenAI has recently appointed Paul Nakasone, former head of the NSA, to their board of directors. Now, I'm not sure what to make of this. There's been many opposing opinions. As you can see here, Edward Snowden really wasn't having it. He claims this is a willful, calculated betrayal of the rights of every person on Earth. I don't know if I would go that far, but keep in mind, this is a guy who knows better than anyone else what the NSA has done and what they're capable of. I am curious to hear your thoughts on this though. If you made it this far into the video, I really appreciate it and would love to hear your opinion on this. Okay, so that's it for me today. There was a lot of stuff to cover, so it might be a little bit of a longer video, so I apologize for that, but I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll leave you guys with this recent clip of the Pope talking about AI. We would condemn humanity to a hopeless future if we took away people's ability to make decisions about themselves and their lives by condemning them to depend on the choices of machines.